Hello everyone, I hope you're all doing extremely well. So today we are reviewing or doing a buyer's guide for the Mirage 2000C as it stands today in August 2019. To keep the review uniform and comparable with the other DCS modules, we're going to use the following categories. One, capability. We're going to look at the weapons, the sensors, the nav, and a bit of miscellaneous. Two, its kinetic performance in DCS compared to other aircraft. Three, its visual effects inside the cockpit and outside. And we're going to rate this between one and five, five being good, one being bad. And we're going to record it on a, a global data sheet, which you'll be able to see in the video description linked down there at the bottom somewhere, where you can go and compare all the different aircraft. As well as that, you'll get the ratings from the other GR members. So it's not just my view you get to see. Four, sound effects, internal and external at different places in its envelope, again rated 1 to 5. 5. Interactivity and detail. This is how interactive is the cockpit, how many buttons are modelled, how does it feel when you use those buttons, what does it do when you use those buttons, and what's the detail roughly behind the systems. 6. Flight model. Not necessarily how well or how realistic does it fly to a Mirage 2000, that is something we just expect to be good, but it's how immersive it is, how does it fool us into thinking that we're not in a video game, but we're actually in a real mirage. How can you feel the weight of it? How can you feel the turbulence and stuff like that? Again, rated 1 to 5. 7. Difficulty. Rated 1 to 5. 1 being easy, like an F-15, uh, and 5 being difficult and lots of study needed, like an A-10C. 1 and 5 is neither good nor bad, it's just giving you an overall rating. 8. The history. Since this thing has been released in early release, what kind of history has it been? Has it had lots of bugs? Has it had lots of problems? Or has it been a smooth ride? It's something that you deserve to know if you're going to put your money into it. So welcome to the Mirage 2000C cockpit. The first thing we're going to do regards capability is look at the weaponry. So we're bringing the armament screen out. We've got 10 pylons or 10 positions that we can use. If we first look at the outer pylons, we've got 1 and 9. And on that we can have an air-to-air -air missile. This is a Matra Magic 2. This is a short-range IR-guided air-to-air missile. Maximum range is about 8 or 9 miles in optimal conditions otherwise around two to four miles. And it's contemporary with the Sidewinder AIM-9 mic or the Soviet R-60 mic. We have one of them there, we can have pods, just smokes, and we can have a rocket pod on each of these pylons. It carries 18 rockets, I'm not sure of the size, and I believe the warheads are general purpose high explosive. Next on pylons two and eight, we can have air to air, we can have magics again or we can have the medium range air-to-air -air, semi-active radar homing missile it's a fox one type missile the matra super 530 delta or we can have bombs and for the bombs we can have the blg 66 ac this is a cluster type munition designed primarily for taking out runways it dispenses several smaller sub cartridges which come down and just pepper the runway and put it out of use basically it's quite a cool a uh, little bomb to use. Whoops, sorry. We've also got a slick, unguided 500 pound Mark 82, or a high drag snake eye version of the Mark 82. Or we can have the same ordnance but two of each per pylon. Or fuel tank, 2000 litres full, 2000 litres empty. Or rockets, and that's the same pod we can have again. Next, we go to the fuselage pods. We've got three and seven, that must be. Bombs. We've got the Bluger again, um, the Mark 82 Slick and the Mark 82 Retarded or High Drag. And then we've got our first of our laser guided bombs. Now we don't have a targeting pod, so we can't actually laser our own targets, but we can drop precision laser guided bombs on other lasers from a JTAC or a friendly aircraft, like an A 10 or something. And we've got a GBU-12 on these pylons, which is the 500-pound laser-guided bomb variant. And we move further up, we've got pylons 4 and 6, and we can have the Beluga, the Mark 82, the Snake Eye, and then pylon 5. We can have the... We've got a mount here where we can take 2 times GBU-12s, or another Beluga, or a single GBU-12, or GBU-16. For memory, that's a 1,000-pound laser-guided bomb. GBU-24, I think that's a 2,000-pound laser-guided bomb and or just our, uh, our smoke winders again and then to pylon 10 now we do have on board countermeasures you know chaff and flare on this aircraft but they are limited and a modern 
fighter slash attack aircraft really does have to have plenty of countermeasures so we've got the additional eclair pod here and i forget how many how much extra capability it gives us but it seriously increases the amount of countermeasures that we can take also note that it does have an onboard cannon two onboard cannons actually they're high caliber i think they're 30 mil but i stand to be corrected pretty good guns not as good as an m61 but they're pretty good uh, but they do have fairly limited ammo is the only thing to note so it's a fairly limited loadout we've got some ground attack ability there not great and it's a shame we can't do our own searching and our own lazing but you know it's there and we can support ground attack and at this point i have to answer the question that you guys always ask cap why do you never fly the mirage 2000 and it's a bit of a sod to answer because i love the mirage 2000 it is a super plane to fly but in the scheme of things when you're doing competitive matches like we do and you know it's results based you have to get results it's simply not that competitive it's just not that useful bear in mind that our games are split into like fourth gen aircraft second gen aircraft third gen aircraft and then this would appear in a fourth gen aircraft match where it's up against f-15 f-18 tomcat su-27 and in air to air it simply can't compete with those aircraft it doesn't have the firepower it can carry what a couple of contemporary sidewinders and two okay fox one type missiles you know up against an f-18 which can have up to 10 much superior fox 3 amram type missiles unless you're a really good pilot and the other guy is a pretty crap pilot you just can't compete with those other contemporary fighters and that's the only reason i don't fly it because we are results based if we were just flying for the fun of it then yes i would love to fly it all the time same with ground attack yes it can do ground attack yes it's got some decent ground attack systems but why not take the harrier which is just a much better ground attack plane and so on so I thought I'd just put that caveat out there. Again, most of you guys aren't going to be in competitive teams like I am, so it's not going to be as much of a problem. In terms of deploying those weapons for the air-to-air, -air, we have a good, modern, relatively easy-to-use air-to-air search, acquisition, and targeting radar. B-scope is down here. The controls are around it, and we've got a control panel back here as well. We can use the Fox 1 Super 530s in a BVR format from our radar, and our HUD here, or we can use them in an ACM format from our HUD here. We have different search methods, roughly comparable with the other contemporary fighters. When using our Magics, our close range Fox 2s, we can use them in an IR search type method where we maneuver our aircraft around to position a hostile heat source roughly at our bore site, acquire a lock that way and fire, or like most of the other modern fighters we can slave our ir seek ahead from our magic missile onto a radar lock off ball site you know somewhere up here and get a lock that way again pretty much standard with the uh, contemporary fighters as far as deploying the ground munitions we have a good modern wcs weapons control system we have the ability in our hud to use ccip targeting ccrp or manual drop again standard for contemporary fighters and attack aircraft it's not quite as flexible as some of the other attack aircraft uh, from memory it forces you to use ccip or ccrp depending on what type of bomb you're dropping where a lot of the other attack aircraft or all of them i think you can actually choose whether you want to use ccip or ccrp so that's one thing that's always bugged me about the mirage the hud is good solid modern useful never had any problems with the hud otherwise in terms of sensors we've talked about the attack radar we've also got a modern rwr system here that will give us a good situational awareness of what radars are in the ao and what aircraft are shooting at us and whatnot we also have a bonus system a missile warning system that'll tell us if non-radar guided missiles are shooting at us at a certain aspect i think it's rear but i stand to be corrected and a lot of the contemporary modern fighters do not have that so that's a bonus We've got a pretty decent, easy to use series of autopilots here. Pretty much all that you're ever going to need in terms of autopilots. And I know it's not a sensor, but I should mention it before I forget. We can air to air refuel. It's a decent, easy plane to air to air refuel from. It uses the Drogue type air to air refueler. In terms of navigation, we've got a good, solid INS based system. If you're starting from cold, you will need to calibrate it. If you start from hot, it's pre calibrated. It's waypoint based. It can be accessed from the HUD here, 
or a relatively decent HSI here. I know it's not digital, but it's okay. It certainly doesn't compare to the uh, the Harrier or the Hornet digital HSIs. And the uh, navigation data input computer here, where we can add waypoints, subtract waypoints, move waypoints, do all sorts of things that we want to do with navigation. It's all relatively easy to use and pretty effective. As well as that, we've got TACAN for searching for friendly air bases. If I can find it, there it is there. And we've also got a type of VOR, ADS and ILS here. So we can home into VOR stations at friendly air bases and full touchdown ILS, including fully automated landing, actually, uh, in any weather here with at suitable runways. So again, it's just uh, it's a good standard amongst the uh, its contemporary fighters. Got a VHF and a UHF radio. Uh, where are they? I think they're here and here with a good head up display there and there for freaks. Okay, so that's all I want to mention about capability. I know we are just scratching the surface, but we're just doing a basic overview, keeping to the main features as it were. So next we'll look at the visual effects inside and outside. This module was released in late 2015, I think, so that is just over three and a half years old. And it's just starting to show its age a little bit. I mean, looking at visual effects, it can be very, very subjective. Some people like certain visuals, some people don't. The best thing I can do here is really pan around the cockpit slowly. Just let you guys make your own decisions, what you think. For me, having just reviewed the F-14 Tomcat and the F-18 Hornet, I mean, this certainly doesn't look bad, but it is starting to show its age a bit. You can see some of the textures just aren't quite there. compared to those absolutely top modules. That said, compared to, you know, the older, the uh, planes, the simpler planes, the F5, F86, some of the FC3 planes, still looking pretty top notch. Uh, I do like the lighting in the Mirage 2000, love this red kind of backlighting we've got here. Also got cockpit lighting we can put on, but you can't really see it in the daytime, so there's not much point of showing you it. Put it on anyway, just in case. It'll work. Is it going to work? Come on. Looking a little bit dated down here now, as you can see. Stick looks, yeah, stick looks okay. Copy, it's always been a little bit dark and fiddly for me. I mean, it's just representing the real plane, obviously. I've always found it hard to find things in a hurry because everything is so little tiddly and small. You've got to really zoom in and find out what things are. Anyway, sorry for moving the camera around so much. It's just some okay textures there. Uh, what else have we got behind here? It's pretty good. It's better than better than a lot of the fighters. I'd say it's just about right for the time. Late two thousand and fifteen. Let's go and have a look outside, shall we?
really out of interest. I mean, the Smekna engines are a relatively small engine as far as I understand, and I've always wondered why the Mirage 2000 has such a big diameter and long jet pipe compared to a lot of other aircraft, and such a big diameter nozzle uh, compared to the size of the engine. I was just wondering if you guys had any thoughts on that. It's just something that's interested me that I've never really looked into. I wonder if I can... <laughs> I just put my parachute out for fun. That was a bit of a stupid idea. It does have a parachute as well. Okay, so we've got to do, we've got to put that out of five, rating out of five. And it's actually a really hard job to do. I love this. I don't want to put it down. I don't want to put the makers down. But I have just reviewed the F-14 and it's kind of a hard act to follow. So the inside now is not great. It's somewhere between okay and good now, you know. It's just not as good as the big modules that are just coming out now. Outside's pretty much the same. It's somewhere between okay and good now. I should say one thing as excellent uh, kind of vapor effects, uh, vapor trails that come off the wingtips, and uh, condensation clouds in the low pressure regions, as we'll see in a bit. I don't know if that's really flight model or graphics, but it's just something to bear in mind. I'm going to rate it a 3.75 out of 5. Again, I may change my mind as I review different planes, so please refer to the master document uh, for any changes. Next we've got sound effects, so that's inside, that's outside, that's static, it's moving, it's manoeuvring, all the different things we're going to look into, and we'll roughly do the same test for all aircraft. So first, we're just going to sit still, rev the engine up, and what I want to hear, it's very important that I hear the different RPMs of the engine. When I'm flying, when I'm in a dogfight, I don't have time to sit here and study my, you know, my kilo per millimetre or newton metre, whatever the hell it is, output. I need to hear it. So something a sound model has to do. It doesn't have to do it in a real aircraft because a real pilot can feel these things through his seat. But I must be able to hear that. So let's have a play. Let's turn this on. And it's kind of the annoying thing about this is on off afterburner. It's a really puny sounding engine. I mean, listen to that. I mean, I might jump in an F-15 or, or something in a minute to see the difference, but. The one thing that bugs me is almost like it's not existent. And I've got the sounds turned up to maximum. Sounds a bit mm, digitized. It's obviously digital, but you know what I mean. It sounds a bit. And then suddenly the burners will kick in and it'll all go to hell. When the afterburners are on, it does sound good. It's a really good sounding afterburner in here. Mill up to mill power though, just seems really wishy-washy to me. It's okay. It's okay. You can just about hear the different RPMs. It doesn't sound particularly linear to me, but it's okay. I just wish there was a bit more meaty sound without the afterburners. That's my only complaint there. Pretty good. It's a very unique sound for the Mirage. When I do my videos, um, in terms of volume and everything, it cuts through just right. Uh, but it's a very unique. You know when it's a Mirage. Whether that's realistic or not, eh, I'm not too bothered. But it does sound pretty meaty. Pretty cool outside, I'm pretty happy with that all round. Good amount of bass in the sound, not too whiny, you know. It's... So let's get in the air, and what I want to see is that we've got ground rumble. It's important I hear ground rumble in the sound engine because I can't feel that my wheels are touching through the seat, and I can already tell, I don't think it's got any. Let's see. Why developers leave out things like ground rumble is beyond me. Maybe I'm wrong. In fact, I think I am wrong. Listen to that. I... Let's just see what happens when we lift off. Yeah, there was ground rumble there. A little bit quiet for my liking, but it was definitely there. Gear up. Um, okay. The next thing I really want to hear is that there's wind noise. Now, I know I've got it. It's a good modern fighter. It's a good modern HUD. But I, it's important for us virtual pilots that we are told not just by our HUD and by our steam gauges, but by the sound model how fast we're going. I want it to be really windy sounding, sorry about the background noise, um, when we're going fast. So let's see if we've got that. And you can already hear that wind noise building up, so that's great. Uh, 
That's a massive criticism of the F-14 that I just reviewed. There's no bloody wind noise on it. And it's really important to us that we can hear that. I want to be able to have to shout over it like I'm doing it now. And I, the reason I want that is there so I don't accidentally go and over G. Very easy to over G in the F-14 because you just don't know how fast you're going. Because the Siwa Hassan noise is in there. So that's top notch, really happy with it. Next, we want to look at maneuvering sounds and we want to look at um, uh, our G. Is it telling us, is it communicating us through sound? Uh, how, what G we're doing and our alpha as well. Again, a real pilot feels all of this through his spine, through his ass, through that. We don't have that, all we've got is a sound engine. So I'm gonna start putting some G on, after that we'll try alpha. You can hear the pilot struggling to breathe now. It's a good sign that we're struggling for G. Next we're going to do alpha. So when we're getting above about 10 degrees alpha, I want to hear the airframe starting to struggle. I want to hear those airfoils breaking apart and the wind tearing itself to pieces. And it's important, again, I've got no real way of knowing. If I'm in a dogfight and I'm looking up here, which is what I'm going to be doing in a dogfight, I'm completely reliant on the sound engine of this aircraft to tell me what my alpha is. I'm not going to have this fancy bar at the bottom when I'm dogfighting, unfortunately. So that's, and there's a lot of things, a lot of the modules have got wrong. So let's try that. I may have to put burners on for this. And you can start to, oh no, that's the afterburner, sorry. A little bit fast, let's just slow down a bit, scrub some speed off. Can you hear that? You can see with the condensation clouds as well. Damn, that looks good does not not look good so it's not as quite as loud as I'd like it to be but you could hear that you could hear that the air really struggling there build some speed up we'll do that again hear that absolutely Sorry about all the beeping and stuff, I don't know how to turn that off, but it's there, it's there, it's subtle, I like it, it works, uh, it's good, it's good. And I've just decided, I'm because of those those vapor trails and all that is so good, I'm going to turn the graphics up to 4. I know it's not perfect in here, but I'm going to, I'm going to turn it up to 4 out of 5, rather than 3.5 or whatever I said before. It's just, it is, I'm in a bit of a stingy mood after, after the F-14. Next is the armament sound, all I came up with is, um, I just haven't got really time to add all the weapon sounds, you have to take my word for, it, for a lot of it, I'm just going to arm the gun if I can remember how to, is it that, that, there we go, pretty decent sounding gun, so, so it's got the necessary sounds it required by uh, a virtual cockpit, tell us when the missiles have been fired, you know, the, 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 the mattress, uh, sorry, the magics and the super 530s, we've got that sound as they leave, Pop, uh, the, um, uh, rocket pods make a nice sound when they fire so we know they'll be fired. The bombs make a necessary clunk sound when they're dropped. It's all stuff that we need as a virtual pilot because we can't feel when those ordnance are dropping. So although I can't show you at the moment, it's all there. All in all, I'm pretty happy with it. Most of the other planes, if you've watched the other reviews, they've all got problems with the sound engine. They're missing this or they're missing that. Sorry, I just realised we haven't done the ex uh, external. Uh, let's get that done. Low power flyby. High power flyby. Really good. It's just like a real air show. Look at that. Oh, I'm just loving this plane more and more as I fly it. So sound, like I was saying, it's a little bit puny in the cockpit um, when you're on uh, low, you know, below afterburner. Other than that, it's got everything I want. And a lot of those other planes, in fact, all of them, have all been missing something. So although I can't, it's not, you know, it's not they've got that precision engine that the maybe sound engine that the F-18 has, it's pretty top notch. So I think we're gonna have to give it four and a half out of five for sounds, which is a pretty dang good score. Okay, next we've got interactivity in detail. And what we're looking at here is our 
interactive is this cockpit? How does me as a human interact with it? Like push the buttons, so the buttons feel good to push. How many of them can I push? What do they do when I push? What are the systems like behind the systems when I start to push the buttons? And what, what details does that have? Now, I haven't been in this cockpit for a long time, I must admit, slowly coming back to me. And what I remember is it's certainly not perfect. It's not as good as maybe a Vigan or an F-14 in terms of interactivity and detail, but it's all, all around pretty good. Oh, God, I can see. Yeah, right. We're going to have lots of beeping. It's a be bit of a bitch in Betty, this aircraft. Slightly triggered there. Sounds. Where are the sounds for ding, ding, ding? Doom, doom. On a Vigan, that would have sounds. On a Tomcat, that would have sounds. There's little things like that. There's little details where I spent my fifty dollars. I I do want the sounds. I want sounds. These all do stuff, and that's good. But I do want those sounds. That one's that can't be done. I can be moved. Trim. Restart. Various volumes. Jing jing. Where's the jing 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 jing? from the heat blur modules. You see some of them, some of them have got sounds. Most of them haven't. Just triggers me just a little bit again if I'm going to be paying paying all these bucks. Uh, I got the Mirage for free from a very um, kind source so that's nice but if I paid my 50 bucks I just want this little bit of detail you know. Zoom, 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 zoom. Click, 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 click. Just saying. Certainly not going to put you off for buying it, but stop it. There we go, a little bit of clicky there. A little bit clicky there. So some of them, some of everything I found here, model roughly, well, everything around here works from memory. Oh, really, Betty? Are we going to play this today? Sounds. Come on, give me pushy sound buttons. Uh, move over to here. Everything around here works, I remember. Uh, I can't remember what this does. I uh, can't remember what this does either. It's been too long now. None of this works. I can't even remember what any of this stuff. Well, that does. I can't even remember what this stuff is, to be honest. Oh, it can't be that important. But generally what we see is that we like to have it touchable. You spin it round, make some cool sound, even if it doesn't do anything. We prefer to have that little extra bit of detail. Again, we're paying bucks for it. Got some rudder adjusters. These gauges down here work. Uh, everything down here is almost all going to work. Let's see, this one's got the clicky sound, these ones don't. I mean, it, it might even be modelled as per the real aircraft. Some buttons might make sound, some might not. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm never going to know that, but it feels like it's certainly missing a bunch of sounds. I'm just that's all I'm saying. Um, these don't do anything in regards to the fuel. I'm not sure why that is. I guess they, for whatever reason, they just don't have that in here. They're just a little, tiny little bit. Of oh, really? Uh, batteries and stuff. All this works, but none of it makes sounds really, apart from maybe the Turner. Um, uh, this is the IFF, isn't it? I think this is the IFF from memory. So it's all modelled, just doesn't do anything, obviously. Uh, what have we got here? This is all modelled. This is all modelled. Uh, brightness and set up and stuff. It's all there, all modelled. Bits back here are modelled. These circuit breakers aren't modelled. Parking brake. Most of it's there. That's too loud. I wish that I didn't have that now. Shut up, Betty. So we had a good click round the cockpit there. Found about 90 to 95 percent is in there. It's models. They do what they're supposed to do. It's not. It's not perfect. It's pretty average, I would, I would say, in that respect. The radar when you go through it, and it's in its uh, finer detail. It's pretty good. Everything seems to be there. Nav system. I haven't been through it in detail for over you see, 12 months. That's uh, right, 18 months. But from what I remember. There's no obvious major missing functionality. Let me know if I disagree with that. I may have that wrong. Like I said, it's been a long time. TACAN, VOR, everything seems to work as it should. Radars, uh, sorry, the, uh, well, the radar as well, but the radios as well. Pretty detailed. I don't remember missing anything there. 
A little thing here, the chronometer. I can't adjust those buttons there. Look, uh, triggers my OCD. So we're just missing a few things. So it's not the best. I mean, and in some ways, it's a good thing. In some ways, it keeps it simpler. Simple is good. And this aircraft is a relatively simple aircraft. Look at that cockpit. Compare it to some of the other planes. It's really not that bad. The detail and interactivity, uh, because we are missing some things. I think I'm going to go with 3.5 out of five for that and again we're comparing things like the Vigan or, or even the Vigan didn't score five but I think the Tomcat scored five but you know the Tomcat everything is model so for now I think 3.5 is uh, is a suitable score so next we're on to flight model testing and we're not too worried about how does it handle in compared to a real Mirage you know as ever we expect it to handle pretty similar to a real Mirage but I'm more interested in in how immersive is it how does it make me feel that I'm in a real Mirage and not in a video game I'm sitting at home in my nerdy little man cave are there any things that it does in the air that makes me think that I'm not in a real plane anything that doesn't feel right can I feel the weight of the plane can I feel the momentum the inertia all those basic physics things that everyone just understands at the, you know, the back of their brain they just know they should expect it and when it feels right it feels right when it doesn't feel right you just know people are clever like that the first thing i should say is that this is a fly-by-wire oriented aircraft i don't have direct control over those surfaces there i can move the stick and the stick goes into a computer or however it works and the computer decides what it's going to do to move those surfaces that's just the part of being a modern um unstable but highly maneuverable aircraft and i'm not a fan of fly-by-wires of aircraft like this aircraft the f-18 where i don't have full control i can feel that i fly all the planes and i can feel when i don't have full control of an aircraft and i don't have full control of this mirage and it annoys me but I can't mark it down for that. It's not the Mirage's fault. It's just how the Mirage is. That's just my personal taste. And a lot of you guys may have a completely opposite taste like that. You may enjoy not having the full control. One of the good things about having a fly-by-wire system is it makes it really easy to fly. Flying an F-18 or a Mirage, I can literally do it with my little finger and my eyes closed. In fact, why don't I just do that just to show you that I can do it. Whereas if you try doing that in an F-5 or a Spitfire or something or anything with direct, direct surface control, you'll just stall and crash immediately. It's just how it is. Something that's in there to just take the workload off the pilot. Other than that, from memory, this is a beautiful flight model. In fact, in fact, why don't we do some silliness? So, our gear is up. Probably the only kind of model where we can do this. I'm doing no work to do this. Look, I've got full stick deflection. Any other plane, any other, sorry, uh, you know, plane without fly by wire, that is an immediate stall and crash. This, everything is done for me. But right, I'm going to start doing it with my little finger now. Are you ready? That is now just my little finger. And I'm flying an air show for you. And now I'm going to try to do it from outside view. I don't know why I'm doing this. It's stupid. Little finger, outside view. Oh, that feels weird. Immediately weird. But you see my point. It's just easy. Look, full back stick deflection. Right, left. In a Spitfire, you would now be dead. Look at this. It's ridiculous. In fact, I can't crash it. I'm now using the palm of my hand, of my wrong hand, to fly this. So easy. And it will not let me crash. Sorry about the beeping. I can't turn it off. Whatever I do is not going to let me crash. See that? It's physically stopping the thing from stalling by limiting the move that I can do. I'm full back stick here. And that's great in a dogfight. Uh, you literally can't crash the bloody thing unless you do something really stupid. Um, and if. Uh, sorry, that, that, that was just a bit of showing off, really, I must admit. But the important thing is um, back to the original task at hand is that it does. Even through the fly-by-wire, uh, something it does better than a Hornet, I think, is it still does feel like a plane. It still does feel like I'm balancing, I don't know, 10 tonnes or whatever it is, 12 tonnes of, of metal here. It doesn't feel any point like it's weightless. Um, it feels like a real fighter. It feels like I can fall out of the air even though fly-by-wire physically won't let me do it. Look, I'm literally trying to crash now. Um, so it is it's good the roll is good it works you know the different speeds and altitudes the roll 
changes. See those lovely leading edge uh, slats there. Look at them go in and out. In, out, in, out. Doing their thing. Again, we talked about the condensation clouds. It gives it loads of immersion effect there. I wish you could turn the fly... Maybe you can turn the flyby wire off and, and be a knobhead, but um, I you know, I'm just not good enough to know how to do it. Um, so really foolproof, easy to fly, but as well as that, it is pretty satisfying as well. Like, I love the F5 because... and the F86 because there's nothing between you, really, and the and the flight services. But this is still fun to... this is still fun to do. Right, I'll stop being silly now. What we should try is some um, high G and high alpha stuff now. It's a fast plane. It's a very fast aeroplane. Fast aeroplane and dangerous. Very easy to over G if you've ever flown a Tomcat. Very easy to over alpha, so... You see my G down there. And we're doing this above. We're doing this 50 feet and 9G. So powerful. Handles the Alpha so well at high speeds. So easy. I can just go full back to stick reflection like that. And it won't, it just won't kill me, whatever I do. Um, let's try and do some high, um, let's try and do some high Alpha. We'll have to slow down for this. Breaks out. It's not really a high alpha type plane. This is uh, with a delta. To be honest, I don't really understand what type of plane it is. But let's try. Uh, let's try some high alpha stuff. I don't think the flyby wire is going to let. Oh, okay. Well, look. Yeah, look at that. Twenty-six degree alpha. Pretty good stuff. That uh, must be an alpha warning, that beeper. In conclusion, although it won't let me really do what I want to do, you know, it's stopping me doing what I really want to do there, it's keeping me alive. I couldn't have done all that manoeuvring shit in, a, in an F5 or something. Something would have gone wrong, I would have crashed. It's a bit like having a modern car, you know. Um, I prefer the old cars where you can crash, even though it's cost me a lot of money through crashing cars. But at least I can do what I want. Where the modern car, you've got your ABS, you've got your traction control, you've got your stability, ESP, and all stuff like that. And that's what this aeroplane is. Got to get back to the boring stuff, so um, interaction with the ground, the wheels, uh, yeah, I've never had a problem. Um, I did have some problems a few years ago with it, but as far as I'm aware, it's, the problem disappeared, so interaction with the ground is, is fine. Uh, you do generally need a parachute, uh, but um, it's got really good air brakes. And the wheel brakes, they're, well, they're okay, they're not too bad. In terms of flying and environmental effects, bad weather, bad high winds, uh, different pressures, different altitudes, it all seems there. Um, I've, you know, I've not done thorough testing of this, but I've never noticed a problem with it, so I'm relatively happy with it in that respect. All in all, because I can't really find anything, I can't really find anything wrong, really, with the flight mode, I don't think it's perfect. Um, yeah, I can't rate it down for being a fly-by-wire plane, that's just how it is. But it's a good, solid, general all-rounder with no obvious problems. Let me know if you disagree with me. Let me know if you, there are problems that I haven't seen. But personally, I just haven't seen them. So I'm going to rate it as very good. 4.5 out of 5 for the overall flight model. Next is the difficulty. So I mean, this is a pretty easy one to rate. It's a pretty easy to fly plane. It's Well, you've seen that. To actually fly a baby, a uh, uh, shaved monkey with no arms could fly a Mirage 2000C. It's just that easy to fly. Landing, it takes a little bit of practice, but landing is not too bad either. Takeoff is obviously a doddle. There's pretty much nothing you can do wrong. Weapon systems are all pretty simple, to be honest. I mean, if we're comparing this to an F-14 or a Hornet or something, the, the systems in there, the radar, everything is pretty self-explanatory. It's easy. Obviously, it's a much more complicated than a Flaming Cliffs 3 model. You know, this is a high-fidelity model at the end of the day. But this is one that I would recommend as a starting high fidelity model. The way I recommend everyone into DCS is a Flaming Cliffs 3 plane. That's a simple low fidelity plane. Unless you're a seasoned simmer and you're really used to all this stuff. And when you're ready to go to the high fidelity model, then I usually say the F5 because it's simple and it's fun to fly. It's good value. Or you can go into this 
easy to fly, so you can concentrate on your systems. There's not too many weapons to worry about, there's not too many subsystems to worry about. But this one does introduce you to all the high fidelity stuff like INS manipulation and uh, radar usage and whatnot. So, difficulty where we've got Flaming Cliffs 3 as a 1, where we've got an A10C as a 5, where we've got an F5 as a 2, then it's just bang in the middle. It's a 3 out of 5. Yes, there are a fair few systems that you have to do learn, but you you know the manual is it's not too big, it's relatively short. And to be honest, a lot of the systems you can just work out yourself. It's one of those planes where although it technically is study level, you don't have to sit for weeks studying everything. The controls are relatively simple. So three out of five feels right. And it is one that when you're ready for high fidelity models, it is one that I would recommend. As promised now we're going to look at some kinetic data. So peak sustained turn rate at 50% gas, ISA low level conditions and FA 18C at 420 KTAS can maintain 22 degrees per second. In DCS the Mirage 2000 at a peak of 380 TAS can maintain 20 degrees per second. So it's, 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 not, it's not as good as an F18 is sustained but it is pretty decent. Better than a J11, an F15, an SU27, a 33 and the non-fighters. So that's pretty good. Instantaneous altitude, 94,000 feet for what it's worth. Where the F-15C holds the best at 108. Sustained altitude, known as uh, service ceiling, 66,000 feet empty. Where a SU-27 could do 72,000 feet. So that's pretty good, pretty competitive. Max speed at optimal altitude, it can do... Uh, 45,000, it can do 1331 KTAS, that's Mach 2.32 clean, and it can do the same in a dive. So that's pretty competitive, and remember that the, the, the 33, the 27, and the 29, and maybe the F-15, these are Flaming Chris 3 planes, they don't have as detailed flight model as as uh, these ones here. So really, it's the second fastest of the high fidelity models, only just beaten by the F-14. Now it's got low speed, max altitude, it starts to suffer down here at Mach 1.21, but it's still okay, still beats a flanker and an F-18. Uh, acceleration, 300 to 650 KTAS at low altitude, where is it? Down here at 20.22 seconds, it just hasn't got the power to weight ratio to beat the F-14. The flanker, the 33 on special afterburner mode, the F-18, well that's really surprising. Wagner, the MiG-29 and the F-15. Uh, high altitude, same test at 15k ASL. We've got it down here at 27 to 8. Again, acceleration is not its bag. It just hasn't got the power to weight. Climb rate from QRA is really good, presumably due to the lightness, I presume, just over a minute. In fact, it almost gets the same as the F-15, which is pretty amazing, really, historically. I remember anecdotally, I've seen some of these in, uh, well, I've seen lots of them, but air shows, and I remember they used to take off back in the old days before the regulations, and they could go just straight up, unrestricted climb, really impressive. So great climb rate, and high speed climb rate for 600 knots, 0 to uh, 20,000 ASL, where is it there, but slower there, uh, 27. That is a very competitive test, and that's it. All round, pretty decent kinetics. Now onto its history, it's been, what, three and a half years old now? Now I haven't flown it much, so I really need help from you guys in its history. I do remember some ancient problems, but because it is a relatively simple plane, I just can't remember that much stuff that's gone wrong with it. I can't remember any radar problems, I can't really remember any weapons problems. I can't even remember that many systems problems. So, to be honest, I'm not that much use in history. I'm going to rely on you guys. Make your comments, please. Refer to certain dates and times if you can. And I will link those up in the video. But anecdotally, I think it's been pretty good. It's by no means been perfect. But in terms of, you know, if you paid your $50, $60, whatever it costs to buy this thing. And over the last three and a half years or whatever you've owned it. I think it's been okay. I don't think it's been too troublesome as some of the modules have been. So, in summary, good quality module. It's not over the top complicated. It's generally speaking relatively simple. Easy to fly, good fun to fly. Beware that it is heavily fly-by-wire, but you'll know that if you're getting into it. Weapons aren't the most effective, I should say at this point. This aircraft is getting a midlife update. I don't know when, in the next few months. And it will be able to carry a much more competitive payload at that point. But we're just reviewing it as it is. If we have to come back and re-review it, then that's something we'll do. Hope you enjoyed the review and see you later.